So the big news is the Mongolian-Russian war, especially because we've seen that Poland and Russia don't like each other. Poland has given open borders to Genghis Khan. Uh, they do have kind of a, a mutual enemy. Will Poland join in and really kind of start the fall of Catherine here? But first, let's check in on the info addicts. We've only checked it once so far. I'm trying to check it every 100 turns. I don't want it to be just like randomly sporadic when I when I check this stuff. Uh, who is this here? Is this Arabia? No. Who is that green? Now, usually these things are pretty... Uh, oh, that is Ethiopia. I didn't realize that Ethiopia was so high in score. Uh, we, I usually don't deal with this historical data because sometimes it's a little bit off, especially when including mods. Uh, you won't see their line, but it looks like... Every, uh, I don't know. Is everybody included? It kind of looks like most of the sieves are included. Uh, when, whenever you kind of uh, mess around with three, uh, 43 sieves and whenever you include mods, sometimes it's a, it's a bad idea. Uh, let's look at military here. What does that look like? Let me see who, who's, I'm guessing that's got to be Mongolia. Yes, it is. Uh, closest, the next closest one is blue, which I believe has got to be Korea. Yes, look at that. So both of the biggest militaries in the world are over in East Asia. That's probably why Genghis Khan doesn't want to deal with Korea. Let's not forget that Korea has the Great Wall, which is going to make things very, very difficult for any AI to attack. Now, that Great Wall will become obsolete once dynamite is discovered, but uh, still, pretty big deal. I think there's another, like, uh, there's another circumstance where... The Great Wall becomes obsolete uh, too, but I, I just I can't remember what it is right now. Population goes to Poland. Wow, looks like they're really pulling ahead here. Must be in a lot of grassland territory. The Philippines in number two. I think the Philippines get a bonus to food somehow, but I'm not 100% on that. Don't don't quote me, but I think they have something that gives them a little bit bonus uh, population or something like that. Can't remember. I know that they're a cultural sieve, but I just I can't remember what exactly they get. Uh, Indonesia three. Surprisingly enough, India, Korea. Russia, a lot of these sieves in East Asia. Ethiopia doing pretty good in Africa. Surprised that England's so high up when they only have three cities. Uh, remember, England is at war with Portugal. They seem to be in a pretty safe spot, but uh, we'll see. Portugal, I think, is just going to get most of their navy destroyed, which is once again going to give them a. It's going to make them. It's going to make them harder because they had like they definitely had the huge advantage of colonizing uh, North and South America first. They. I don't know anyone else that can sail across the sea, but remember, they don't know exactly where uh, North and South America are. And uh, because they've declared war on both Carthage and England, and they've separated their navies, uh, they're getting ships destroyed, pretty much. So, yeah, this is going to let the AIs catch up. Anyways, let's check on manufactured goods. Of course, Mongolia's number one, but we've got Rome at number two. Pretty uh, spread out so far. Uh, oh, I didn't check crop yield, did I? Crop yields, uh, Mongolia, then the Philippines. So, so I'm, I'm, yeah, there we go. I, I'm assuming that we're going to see Mongolia at the top of most of these lists, except for the population category, but that, that's about right. Uh, he'll catch up in population by the end of the campaign, I promise. Uh, land area, that's fine. Military, here we go. Uh, oh, this seems like uh, we saw Korea. See, that's why I don't like to check on that historical data graph, because I didn't see Poland there. I mean, was I smoking crack, and did I just miss them, or... It looks like I I don't know. That's why I don't I don't look at this stuff. So Poland is right behind Mongolia. That is going to keep Mongolia. See, here's the key things. Since Mongolia only really has a few civs to attack right now, Russia is a very very smart move to go for. Uh, but the powerful civs around them have built up a military. We're seeing that kind of Arabian effect that we saw earlier when Babylon had this huge military. I think that's starting to play out in the central part of Asia, where Mongolia has a huge military. So then Korea felt obligated to get a big military. Same thing for Poland. Uh, Portugal is number four in, in the world. We have Greece out of nowhere at fifth. I mean, we I, I, at fifth place. I, I mean, we, they had a huge, a huge military in North Africa. They got a lot of it destroyed because of a b very bad attempt at destroying, uh, at taking over the Sunghai capital. But still pretty surprising there. Look at that. I mean, Russia's not a pushover there in sixth place, but uh, it looks like they're, they could lose a lot of cities here potentially. They're not low enough, I don't think, for Poland to be willing to join in. Ottomans pretty high, and uh, by the way, the Ottomans did declare war on the Assyrians. This might be a really bloody battle, but it could give the Ottomans even more power in the Middle East. And uh, let's not forget the the Ottomans are technically, I think, the first nation, the first yeah, the first nation to colonize outside of their starting continent. Well, Portugal counts technically, Europe, Africa, but uh, the Ottomans also colonized in Africa. You could probably find find things that. Uh, that statement would make that statement untrue. Let's go ahead and check on technologies. Philippines are in number one with 35 techs. 35 tech. So we're about halfway through the game. This is telling me that we should 
we should see the game kind of come to a close around maybe turn. Well, everyone should have about... We should see sieves at all the techs around maybe 450, 500, which is exactly perfect. Uh, Poland, Korea, and the Philippines all tied. Then we actually have a kind of a kind of a drop off with uh, 33 for Indonesia and France, and then a big old tie for third place. A lot of people have 32. Uh, is India one of them? Yes. Where's Portugal at? So Portugal's got 32 technologies. We know that they have ships. They're just the only nation that to build ships. The Philippines might be the first to colonize, and we need to look into this. Uh, Indonesia could be the first to colonize. Korea, I don't think they will because of their turtle ships. They will not try to upgrade to a deep-sea sailing uh, boat because they like keeping a hold of their unique units, so I guess that makes a lot of sense. And uh, Poland can't colonize anyways. So maybe you know, Spain doesn't have anything coastal. They could send over units, but that's unlikely. Ethiopia, Russia. So we still, have, we still have a while. Where's England at? England is a big one. Where's Japan? Japan is another really, really big one. Japan looks like they're really far behind. Yes, they are. 29 techs. So they are very far behind. I didn't even consider the uh, Southeast Asian civs like the Philippines, Indonesia, Champa at, at their chance of colonizing. They can, uh, but they don't have to go for Australia. They can go for a lot more than just Australia. I think that's what all we'll do for now. Technologies. Let's check on wonders. I always like looking at who has the most wonders. Right now, it's this tie between Assyria, Ethiopia, the Philippines, and Russia. Russia might fall, so they might lose a few of those wonders. Treasury doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and just check on cities. Love seeing the amount of cities everyone has. Bam, Mongolia has 10. So much more than everybody else. Wow, that's incredible. All right, let's go ahead and finally hit next turn. Very much liked looking at the info addicts. It's been such a long time. Uh, we have Arabia. Okay, so Arabia just declared war on, uh, on, on Russia. Uh, that is telling me that maybe the AIs are more willing to do something risky here, which I, I got to think. I mean, who else would Poland be saving up this military for? Ooh, ooh, ooh. And uh, most of that military that Poland controls is along the front of Hamburg and St. Petersburg. What's going on here? I know that Russian uh, units will be falling. Byzantium, Spain, still waiting for that Spanish-Portuguese war. That will be a big one. I, and I'm still very shocked also about that Greek, that the Greeks have so many numbers. Why? Why have Greece? I mean, Greece is doing pretty good. I, I guess I've really been underestimating Greece. Usually Greece is stuck with one city and then they eventually get destroyed by the Ottomans or Arabia or something like that. Uh, I have been really, really bad at, at talking about Alexander. He's, he's doing a fantastic job. Looks like he's a little bit behind in technology, or maybe those are just the boats. Those are just his favorite boats or something. I don't know. But uh, he does have three cities in Europe and then one very strong colony in North Africa with, uh, with the military units to defend that stuff. Uh, and it would be very, very hard to take over Greece without a really strong navy, which Rome might be able to, but why? Why, why, why would Rome care? Rome, I think, is more concerned with Portugal, France, and England than anything else. Still waiting for Austria to get taken over. I, I know that that will probably be a soon sort of thing. It's pro probably be soon. And look at like like I predicted. I mean, Portugal was going to lose units. They were going to lose ships. Uh, there were two big big uh, boats attacking Amsterdam, and they're gone now. Really? Wow. Now that is very surprising. Korea looks like they're going to take over their first Vietnamese city. Uh, very surprised that Mongolia lost this city. Well, that was a really good move by the AI. Spain and Assyria going after Carthage. Carthage is only at one city, so uh, that's not a big surprise. But they might lose Novgorod here. They could. They've got three composite bowmen. They do have a musket man, which I believe... I don't... I, I mean, I don't believe that Genghis Khan has any sort of uh, gun gunpowder units. I don't think so. Mali, Boyer, those are some big ones that, that, went, to, that went to war with Carthage. Genghis Khan is secretly plying against Ron Al Rashid. All right. We have the Huns and Denmark piecing out. I absolutely love this campaign. Just want to throw that out there. I, I am an absolute love. Tibet has not fallen. That's crazy. That is insane. I mean, that, that city is fresh, too. I mean, they've got everything plundered, uh, it, and it's just a mess. But dang, I'm, I'm shocked that they haven't gotten taken over yet. That's a miracle. Uh, but no, I, this is such a fun campaign. Like, I, I am in disbelief how much fun this campaign is. Uh, Songhai, boom, Korea took over the first Vietnamese city, like we predicted. We'll see exactly what they do. Uh, oh, well, Viet Vietnam was coming up with some reinforcements, it looks like. Now, a lot of the power from the Koreans is off in the, I think it's what's it, the Sea of Korea. 
I don't think the Philippines are willing to give Korea open borders, so that means that they cannot utilize this navy for attacking the uh, Vietnamese capital, Hanoi. Anything else that's happened? Uh, I know that I saw Songhai declare war, which is kind of a big deal, kind of. I want to see if Greece will declare war or Portugal. Boyer and the Zulu have pieced out. We've got the Philippines completing uh, the global theater. The globe theater, I'm sorry. And uh, yeah, the Zulu are doing just fine. They are doing just fine. What does my spy tell me? Genghis Khan is plotting against Theodora. Uh, they've been doing that for a while. I'm sure it's only a matter of time before they take over that northern city. They pretty, they, I mean, luckily, they're, they're hidden behind all these forests, so that's good. And that'll distract uh, Genghis Khan for quite a long time for the AIs that surround them. Really interested in this front here. Here come the Kashyyyks. So there's three Kashyyyks. Those are powerful, powerful units. Obviously, the AI doesn't use them to the best of their ability. Wow. Now, why didn't you start attacking the city? It looks like they're almost retreating the Kashyyyks. Or maybe they're just trying to navigate around. This is not good because you're giving more time for the Russians to to get their stuff into play. Uh, you're giving only more time. And I'm wondering if they're going to continue to move through Indian territory to go up for this Mongolian city. This Mongolian city is like undefended as well. For the most part. I mean, yeah, there's, there's a long swordsman and a crossbowman, but that's not too much. Obviously, you know, uh, Genghis has an amazing infrastructure. So they'd be able to get reinforcements over there fast, but maybe not fast enough. I mean, look what happened. Russia got reinforcements up. Yeah, they lost their first city, but now they're somewhat defending Novgorod. They do need more range units, though. Well, they've got three, and then the bombardment from the city itself. It's not too bad. And it looks like they're going to just grind away at each other. Unfortunately, uh, Korea is pretty distracted in the south with Vietnam. Vietnam is is now coming up with, with way more units. They're going to need to swing these... Uh, these Korean military units back across to reinforce here. Oh, they've got they've got help from the north. I guess they're fine. I'm gonna watch this again. Not a, not attacking the city. We might just see a lot of units fall. So luckily for uh, Russia, India did give them open borders, and I'm I'm wondering exactly why. Interesting choice there. How is India? Always forget that India has cities in the north. So it would be a bigger deal if India were to have, would to have taken over Tibet, but I don't think it's going to happen. Not yet, at least. It might happen eventually, but man, I can't believe that both of these civs were not going to be able to get the job done. Like, that is surprising. How How is that possible? Remember, the Assyrians and the Ottomans are at war. But I don't know. Wait, who's at war with Arabia? Is that is that the Ottomans as well? It could be. And that could be screwing over Solomon here. I think... Is that the... No. I think they just have open borders. I think Arabia is just lucky to have open borders with the Ottomans. Maybe. I have no idea. And yeah, like I said, Babylon is still alive. Boyer and Persia have pieced out. What else do we see here? The Ottomans getting more and more of a navy. How are they? Are they building it all entirely in just this one city? Is that? Yeah, it's got to be the only way they're getting their ships down. I mean, they could build it in Constantinople and they go all, all the way around, but that's super unlikely. Aha, now they're starting to attack the city. The problem is that there are reinforcements. You're going to lose some stuff here. Yeah, this is going to be a very, very bloody battle. This The siege of Novgorod uh, between the Mongolians and Russia is going to be really, really bloody. And this is what's going to kind of... I mean, it, it looks like it's going to obviously... It looks like it's going to favor Genghis Khan. But uh, in the process, he could lose a lot of military units, as well as Russia, I think, will for sure lose a lot of land units unless they retreat, which is a possibility. The AI does that sometimes. Now, what does the AI do? Ooh, the AI retreated instead of attacking the city. They shouldn't have done that, because once they take over Novgorod, for the most part, the AI will retreat. Usually, usually, the Russian AI would typically retreat. How about Poland? Do you do anything, Poland? Assyria joining the war? No, I'm sorry, Tibet joined, joined the war against Assyria. So did Afghanistan. I wonder why. Why Assyria? And when is Persia going to decide to do something about it too? How are the Koreans doing? Koreans are going to, they're regrouping. But this will not be as easy of a city to take for uh, taking over this the next Vietnamese city. A lot more siege units, some pikemen, a composite bowmen. Obviously the bombardment, you got to always worry about that. So what's going on? I didn't even get to check what's going on in uh, 
kind of the southeastern Asian sieves with uh, the Indonesians and the Philippines. I, I've got to always be watching this. Uh, now, wait a second. When did the Philippines take over? I must have missed this. I think during the last video when they pieced out. Because this was an Indonesian city originally, and this fell to the Philippines. So the Philippines are now at three. Indonesia is at three. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What? The Philippines are at four. Um, that's crack so bad. That crack is so bad today. Uh, yes. So the, the Philippines are at four. Indonesia is at three. Very interesting part of the map. I love this part of the map. It's so entertaining. But yeah, no, I don't see any ships from them either. It might take we I mean we might see a lot of the civs discover deep sea sailing but it won't it'll take a while before civs actually I think begin to explore the seas. I think the, the civs are so worried about war right now they don't want to colonize. There goes Persia Assyria. All right. That's a, that's that's big. Uh Korea Assyria. I don't know what Arabia is doing. Austria and Byzantium have decided to join in. Doesn't really matter as long as the Ottomans and Persia are are at it. Uh, it is not going to matter too much. Unless, of course, I guess Arabia also wants wants a little piece of that. Arabia just sent over their entire military up north. Their cities are completely undefended. Uh, again, the AI does not notice that, that type of stuff. I really wish they did. But then again, there's a fog of war, so they wouldn't know it anyways. They would have no idea. I, I, I mean, could you imagine the advantage? Whoa, look at Sunghai go after Carthage here. Dang. Which leaves the uh, the Songhai capital completely set, completely open to an attack by the Greeks. Remember, the Greeks have shown interest in moving to the south. Uh, they want to pick up another city in Africa. They've tried to declare war and take this one over. Uh, it probably is not a good idea because they could probably shift back down and they would just give up on the siege of Carthage. Look at Spain with those units, though. Spain with those units, man. They would not let it. They would not make it easy. For, uh, for Maria. And that's something that, you know, no matter how powerful Portugal gets, Spain will always be in the heart of, uh, of Iberia and really give them a tough time. How do you build an infrastructure? You can't. Lisbon is completely, uh, it's completely isolated. You could make an infrastructure from Braga, Porto to Orleans. That's about it. But they haven't. That's one thing to keep in mind. They haven't. They've not built any roads or anything like that. One simple citadel could ruin that whole thing. So uh, these, you know, Braga's also not coastal. Orleans, Porto, Lisbon, all the other ones are coastal. But something to keep in mind, they will not be able to connect this. They would absolutely need a road here to Porto. And, you know, have Porto and Lisbon have a harbor to do some city connections. Still pretty shocking. Now, what's going on with Carthage? Uh, Mali is also involved in the war. Looks like they're bringing in reinforcements if Songhai is not able to get the job done. Portugal's still also uh, in the war, I think. I think Portugal trading with Rome. Hmm. Two of the strongest European powers working together. I guess that's probably smart. Whoa, look at look at France. All these musketeers being built up. I wonder what they're gonna try. The problem with France is they don't they border like kind of strong sieves. Unless you go after England, I mean that's your only choice. That's that's their only choice that they can go for. What's going on here? We've got the Huns. Can't remember who the Huns are at war with. I think it's India. Yeah, that's right. They're going after India. And uh, yes, Mongolia has retreated, and actually quite a bit. It looks like Russia's gone on the offensive, which might be a bad idea because it looks like they might lose a lot of their units, and then Genghis Khan would go in for an attack. That's a really smart move for the AI to do. An incredibly smart move. Russia's got to send this stuff back north. They have to. Huge battle going on in East Asia between Korea and Vietnam. Rome is pieced out. And it is turn 220. Anyways, guys, campaign still very, very exciting. I'm having a lot of fun here. So much fun. Hope you guys are too. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.